So, the last class we have discussed about how we got this uh, the PMOS width as 2 and uh, NMOS width as 1 because the NMOS width is 2 to achieve a effective resistance R or a unit resistance, but PMOS has a twice the resistance that is a 2 R, but uh, the due to mobility. So, in order to achieve a effective resistance as R, we are doubling the width of the PMOS transistor so that we will get a equal rise and fall time. So, the PMOS width it has taken as 2 and NMOS width as it is taken as 1. So, let us see how the sizing of the transistor can be done. Uh, first, we will see how we can write the uh, circuit diagram by using uh, transistor level. So, you can see here the A and B is a AND gate, right. So, this AND gate means your A and B that means the two transistor will be in series, okay, plus C is there. So, C is alone, okay. So, that comes in parallel over here. So, A B is in series that will come parallel with the transistor C, okay. So, the PMOS is exactly opposite because it works in conduction complement mode. So, your PMOS transistors when we write a diagram, if A and B is in series in N channel, right. So, here A and B will comes in parallel, okay. And C comes in parallel with A and B, right. Here C comes in series with A and B, okay, exactly opposite, okay. So, now you can see here the size of the uh, transistor, since here the two transistors are in series here. So, we have taken the width of the NMOS transistor as 2 here, but I have already told the width of the NMOS transistor should be 1. But see we are doubling the width means we are reducing the resistance. So, what happens here is two transistors in series, no, internally this will become R by 2 and R by 2. So, if you add this R by 2 and R by 2, finally you get the resistance as R itself. So, when there are two series transistors are there, you have to double the width that is you going to get here as 2 and 2, okay. But here it is only one transistor that is why we have taken with res reference to this, we have taken the width as 1, okay. Suppose you can ask a question, there are 3 transistors are available for example in series, then what is the width we have to take? We have to take the width as 3, 3, 3. So, internally it will become R by 3, R by 3, R by 3. So, we can achieve a unit resistance as R, okay. So, for this case, so we have taken 2 as the width of your NMOS transistor R by 2 and R by 2, we will get uh, uh, the unit resistance as uh, the R, okay. And what is the width of the, uh, the uh, PMOS transistor? It is 2, okay. So, the width of the PMOS transistor, see, see you can see here A and B, you can A and C are in series now. Similarly, B and C is also in series, A and B are constructed in parallel, right. So, if any one transistor is turned on, if C is on, then it takes the path A C or B C. So, now that means that the two transistors are in series now. What is the reference of your unit width? What is the reference of your inverter? The unit, I mean the width of your PMOS transistor is 2. So, here two transistors are in series. So, you have to double it. So, it becomes 4 and 4. So, internally it will become R by 2 and R by 2. So, you get here as 2, you can achieve a unit resistance as R, okay. So, this is how we are doing the sizing of the uh, transistors, okay. So, now you can uh, uh, see how the circuit diagram is going to work. Okay. So, you can take uh, any uh, combination say I will take uh, uh, I will take here as A is equal to uh, 0 and uh, B is equal to 1 and C is also 1. Okay. So, what it says A into B you get 0 plus 1. Okay. So, it is 1, 1 complement you get here as 0. 
Okay, so that is the answer you should get here. So you can see here when A is 0, so this is off, when B is 1, this is on and C is also 1, so this is also on. But since and similarly when A is 0, so this is on okay, and uh, B is 1, so this is off and C is also 1, this is off. Okay. So, in case of your P channel transistor, A is 1, when that is A is 1, A is 0, so this PMOS transistor is turned on, but C is off here. So, there is no series path exist. So, your output Y is not pulled up to the supply voltage, output Y is not pulled up to the supply voltage, whereas in this case, a is 0, so this transistor is off, B is 1, so since this switch is open, okay, so the since this switch is open, the series path is not going to exist here, but here the C transistor is turned on here in this case, but that comes in parallel with A and B, so your output Y is pulled down to 0, that is why you get output Y is equal to 0, okay. So now let us see about uh, AY22, I have already explained uh, with respect to the cases, I will just explain how the sizing of the uh, transistor can be done. So, with reference to this inverter, this is I am calling it as a uh, unit inverter. So, uh, this is also because it gives a equal rise and uh, fall time, okay. So, AB plus CD uh, the whole bar. So, AB that means in series, CD is also series, in between plus there is a parallel, okay. So, again if A and B are in series in PMOS, A and B will comes in parallel and C and D are in series in N channel. So, in P channel C and D it comes in parallel. So, A B parallel in series with C D parallel, okay. So, now the what is the reference, uh, uh, no, the width of a NMOS, it is 1. So, since two transistors are in series to achieve a unit resistance, so we are taking the width as the uh, 2, okay. So, it is R by 2, R by 2 internally it will happen. So, the width of your NMOS is 2. Similarly, here also we have taken two transistors are in series. So, it is R by 2, R by 2, okay. And then the, it can take the path as like this. So, it can take here as A to D or A to C. Similarly, it can also take the path as the uh, B to C or B to D, okay. So, anyway the two transistor will comes in a series only. So, two transistor comes in series, so that is why it is the reference is PMOS width is 2. So, two transistors are in series, so we have taken it as 4, 4, 4 and 4. Is that clear? Okay. So, next we can go for complex uh, AOI signal. So, initially B plus C will be in parallel in series with A. So, it can take the path of uh, AB or AC, okay. Then D and D is in series, okay. D and D is in series, okay. So, the PMOS is exactly opposite. D and D will comes in parallel and B and C is comes in series in parallel with A, okay. So, you can see the uh, sizing of the transistor here. So, A and B is in series or A and C is in series, the two transistor will comes in series in order to achieve a unit resistance here. So, it is R by 2, R by 2. So, we are taking the width of your NMOS as 2 and 2. Here also, we are uh, the uh, two transistors are in series. So, it is R by 2 and R by 2 means. So, again we are taking the width of your NMOS transistor as a 2, okay. When it comes for uh, the uh, PMOS transistors. So, you can see here these three transistor can be in series or these three transistor it can be in series or these two transistors in series or the or these two transistor can be in series, okay. So, now these three transistors are in series with reference to this to achieve a unit resistance, we are taking a width as 6, 6 and 6, okay. 
So, here also it will be considered as 6, okay, but here the 2 transistors will comes in series, here also the 2 transistors will be comes in series. So, we have to take half the width of this. So, that is why we are taking the width here it as a 3. Okay. So, this is how the sizing of the transistor is uh, done. Okay. So, um, the figure uh, whatever it has shows, see we are adjusting the transistor sizes so that N and P based networks have the same drive strength to ensure the equal and uh, equal rise and uh, fall times. The next is CMOS uh, transmission gates. Okay. So, the NMOS transistors it is going to give a strong 0 okay. and PMOS transistors it is going to give a strong 1. Okay. So, the NMOS transistors it will not give a strong 1 because whatever the VDD it is there for example, if it is 1 volt minus the threshold voltage it is going to give a value. So, that is why the NMOS transistor is not giving a strong ones, NMOS transistor it is going to give a strong zeros. Similarly, the PMOS transistor it is going to give a, a strong one, but a weak zero. Why? Because so it is not showing exactly a zero volts, it is showing the threshold value that is VTP. Okay. So, NMOS transistors gives a strong 0 and PMOS transistors it gives a strong ones. Suppose, we want to uh, uh, get a both strong ones and strong zeros, then we are combining both NMOS and PMOS transistors that results into a transmission gate, that results into a transmission gate. So, we will see how this transmission gate is going to work. You can see there is one the uh, control signal or the select signal or the gate input. Okay. So, anything you can call. So, here it has mentioned it as S. So, here it is S complement. Okay. So, A is the input and Z is the output. So, we will see now the case as S is equal to 0. Okay. When S is equal to 0, obviously the S bar is equal to 1, S complement will be equal to 1. Okay. So, you can see here when S is equal to 0, this is an NMOS transistor and this is a PMOS transistor. So, when S is equal to 0, the NMOS transistor is also turned off and P, when S bar is equal to 1, the PMOS transistor is also turned off. Okay. So, if you give a value as 0 or 1, so the output is not going to change that value, it is not going to give any value. Are you getting it? Now, if your A is 0 or A is 1, it is not passing that value. Usually, the transmission gate is just act like a buffer. Whatever the value if you give here, that is going to appear at the output side. Okay. So, now if you give the S is equal to 1, if you give S is equal to 1, obviously the S bar is equal to 0. Okay. S bar is equal to 0. So, when S is equal to 1, since this is an N channel transistor or an NMOS transistor, so it is turned on. Okay. So, this is a P channel transistor or a PMOS transistor, this is also turned on. Now, the switch is closed when you apply S is equal to 1. So, the transmission gate, it works like a buffer. So, if you give 0 over here, your Z will be 0. If you give 1 here, the Z will be 1. So, that means that the transmission gate is going to give a strong zeros and strong ones. Okay. So, this is an another symbol of writing a transmission gate. Okay. So, the bubble indicates it is a PMOS and here it is NMOS transistor. So, there are many ways of writing a transmission gate symbol. So, uh, some textbooks uh, gives like this. So, it is 
uh, A and Z and there is an inverter. So, it is S complement and this is S or you can also write it a one more way like this. So, different test books will write in a different way, but all uh, are same. So, this is Z and this is uh, inverter. So, this is S complement and this is only S. So, there are many ways to represent uh, the transmission gate. So, tri states as the name itself indicates it is having a three possible states. Okay. So, we have gone through uh, the CMOS logic gates that is a complementary CMOS logic gates as inverter, NAND gates and NOR gates. So, what are the output levels we have observed? We have observed only two output levels whether the output will be 0 or output will be 1. Okay. So, it depending upon whether the pull up transistor is turned on or pull down transistor will be turned on. Suppose, if both the pull up and pull down transistors are turned off, if both pull up and pull down transistor, pull up means PMOS transistors, pull down means NMOS transistors. If both pull up and pull down transistors are turned off, then okay, the output will be in high impedance state or floating that is the Z output is going to result. The output will be in the high impedance state or the floating output Z is going to result it. So, this is of very importance in the uh, multiplexers, uh, buffers okay, and uh, the, it is going to give a very importance in multiplexers, memory elements and buffers. Okay. So, that is what this tri states is having three possible states. Okay. So, this is a tri state buffer. Okay. Buffer means whatever the value it is there, the same value it is going to appear at the output side. So, it is having a two inputs and one output and this input we are calling it as a enable input. So, if your enable input is one, if your enable input is 1, then if your A is equal to 0, your output will be 0. If A is 1, your output will be 1. For example, if your enable input is a 0, if your enable input is a 0, if you give A as 0 or A as 1, your output is will be in the high impedance state that is Z state. Okay. So, the tri-state uh, buffer can also be uh, realized with the true and complementary enable signals. So, that is enable and enable bar. So, you can see the uh, function table over here. So, if your enable signal as a 0, obviously your enable bar will be 1. Okay. So, then whatever the value you give across your A input, the output will be in high impedance state. So, if you give A as 0 or A as 1, there is no change in the output. The output will be in the high impedance state. Okay. So, now if you give the enable signal as the, as, uh, the enable signal as 1, so that the enable bar will be 0. So, if you give uh, a input as uh, 0 okay, and your output will be 0. If you give A input as 1, the output will be 1. See A input as 0, output will be 0. If A input as 1, the output will be 1. So, how many states? Z, 0 and 1. Okay. So, there is one more state is there. If both pull up and pull down transistors are turned on simultaneously, then crowbar x state is results. The crowbar x state is nothing but an indeterminate state. So, that condition is not allowed in any of the CMOS logic circuits. Okay. So, here the Z state is allowed when both pull up and pull down transistors are turned off. Okay. High impedance state that is Z state is going to occur. This is very useful in multiplexers, 
memory elements and uh, tri state buffers whereas if both pull up and pull down transistors are turned on simultaneously then crowbar x state results this is an indeterminate state and this state will not be used in any of the cmos logic circuit so the next is a tri state inverter so we have learnt in the uh, previous class about the cmos inverter so whatever the value if you give across that the inverted version we are getting across the output right so inverted version we are seeing at the output side but see in the tri state inverter means we are going to get the three possible state 0 1 and z so how we can realize this a tri state inverter so you can see here the tri state inverter is constructed by using two pmos transistors and two nmos transistors okay so with respect to the speed if you talk about so it reduces the speed okay half the speed of your cmos inverter because it uses four transistors okay so and you can see here there are two control signals that is enable signal and enable bar signal okay so now if your enable signal is a zero let us take up the first case and enable bar signal will be one okay so then what happens both the switches are open both the switches are open so both the transistors will be turned off both the switches are open so your enable signal is zero means enable bar will be one so both the switches are open so this will not work like an inverter so your output y is equal to high impedance state that is z so even if you give any value as 0 or 1 you won't get the output as 1 or 0 your output will be in the high impedance state that is a z state now if we give the enable input as 1 if we give the enable input as 1 that is enable input as 1 so enable bar will be 0 so this transistor is turned on because nmos transistor so when you apply a gate input voltage is equal to 1 this is turned on so this is pmos transistor when you apply gate input as 0 this transistor is also turned on that means both the switches are closed see if both the switches are closed it is create a path it has created a path over here now the circuit will work like a ordinary inverter like how the cmos inverter is going to work like it will work like a ordinary inverter so when you give here a is equal to 0 the output y is equal to 1 if you give a is equal to 1 so if a is 1 this transistor will be on and this transistor will be off so your output y is equal to 0 output y is equal to 0 okay so now what is the logic symbol of a tri state inverter you can see here so the input one enable input and this is a inverter symbol or you can also write it with the true and complementary uh, enable signal as here it has uh, the enable okay and here it has then enable bar this is enable and that is enable bar okay so that is a logic symbol of the uh, tri state inverter so next comes is uh, the cmos implementation of a multiplexer okay so multiplexer connects one of the n inputs into a single output line the logic value of that input is transferred to the output multiplexer connects one of the n inputs into a single output line the logic value of that input is transferred to the output so this is a uh, the diagram it shows the realization of a 2 is to 1 multiplexer using transmission gates so 2 is to 1 multiplexer we are calling it as 
2 is to 1 mux multiplexer we are calling it as a short form as mux ok. So, 2 is to 1 multiplexer. So, what do you mean by 2 is to 1? So, it has 2 data inputs, 1 select input and 1 data output. What do you mean by 4 is to 1 multiplexer? It has 4 data inputs to select that 4 data inputs, 2 select inputs are required and 1 data output. What is 8 is to 1 multiplexer? It has 8 data inputs and 1 data output to select one of the 8 data inputs, we require 3 select inputs, ok. So, let us discuss about the uh, 2 is to 1 multiplexer here. So, you can see here the there is a I already told 2 data inputs are the termed as ok. So, the uh, the two uh, data inputs are termed as A and B and there is one select signal is required to select one of this uh, data input. So, that is why it is called as S and it is constructed using a transmission gate symbol. So, we will see now. So, now if we give S is equal to 0. Now, if you give here as S is equal to 0. If you give S is equal to 0, ok. If you give S is equal to 0, you get due to this inverter you get here as 1, right. Now, the bubble indicates it is a PMOS transistor. So, you get here as 1 ok and then here S is 0. So, here this is an NMOS transistor ok. Since again the same S been connected to here ok. So, this S will be 0. So, this is a PMOS transistor. So, here you get a 0 and this is an NMOS transistor here you get 1 ok. So, now from this diagram there are two transmission gates are used and you can see here this transmission gate that the second transmission gate is uh, turned off because the here n channel it is given it as 0 for p channel it has given as 1. So, this transmission gate is turned off whereas, this transmission gate is turned on right. Now, whatever the value you are giving at the a input side that value is transferred to the Z output. So, the transmission gate it is just act like a buffer. So, here even if you give a value as B as 0 or B as 1, since this transmission gate is off, it is not going to appear at the output side. So, now if you give A as 0, your output will be 0. If A as 1, the output will be 1. Okay. So, let us take up the second case. Okay. So, we can take the second case. Now, I will take here as S is equal to 1. If I take S is equal to 1 due to the inverter over here, the inverter output will be 0. That means, here I am getting 0, here I am getting 1, ok, because my S is 1 here. Similarly, here it will be 0, here it will be 1. So, when you see here the values, when you see the values over here, ok. So, the here it is a PMOS transistor, so its value is 1 and NMOS transistor its value is 0. So, this transmission gate is turned off ok, whereas this transmission gate is turned on because for N channel we are providing uh, the gate input voltage as 1 and for P channel we are providing the gate input voltage as 
0. Now, whatever the value it is there at B, that is passing on to the output side. So, if you apply B is equal to 0, then Z is equal to 0. If you apply B is equal to 1, the Z output will be 1. So, now if you give A as 0 or 1, it is not going to reflect at the output side because this particular transmission gate is off. It is not passing the value from A to Z. Okay. Now, look at the logic symbol of this. You can see the logic symbol here. So, the logic symbol of the multiplexer is it has two inputs, one output and one select input. That is why it is called as 2 is to 1 multiplexer. Okay. So, how the IC version is available? The, this is a corresponding logic symbol and this we are calling it as an IEEE standard symbol. So, you can see IEEE standard symbol as uh, the, there is a control signal it is called as a G that is nothing but S and there are two data inputs. These two are the data inputs and only one output is there and it can also be written in this way also uh, the chip the select signal will be given it as separate here and these two are the in data inputs and this is the output side. Okay. So, the figure E it is uh, shows uh, the an inverting buffered implementation. So, this is an inverting buffer implementation. So, you can see here at the output side when you compare this circuit and this circuit at the output side there is an inverter. So, your logic symbol is also you can see here there is a bubble here, there is a bubble. Logic symbol also there is a bubble because at the output side there is an inverter. That means, we are getting a inverted version of the output. So, let us see how it is going to work. So, when S is equal to 0 for example, this will be 1. Okay. So, this will be 0 this will be 1, again this will be 0. So, this particular transmission gate it is turned on whereas, this transmission gate is off when we apply S is equal to 0. So, when you apply S is equal to 0, whatever the value if you give the inverted version we are going to get at the output side. Suppose, when we give A is equal to 0 at this stage uh, after, I mean after the I mean at the transmission gate output we get 0. Due to the inverter, we get the output as 1. Due to the inverter, uh, we get the output as 1. Due to the inverter, we get the output as 1. But the transmission gate output is 0. But due to that inverter, we get the output as 1. So, similarly, if you apply S is equal to 1 over here, okay, so we get here as 1 and here as a 0. Okay, so, here as it is uh, the inverter will be 0 here, here it has 0 and, and this will be 1. So, in that case what happens? So, this transmission gate will be turned off whereas, this transmission gate, the second transmission gate will be, uh, the second transmission gate will be turned on. Okay. So, the whatever the value you are giving here, if you give B is equal to 0 or B is equal to 1, if B is 0, you get 0 here. Due to the inverted, uh, uh, there is an inverter at the output side, we get 1 or if you give B as 1, you get here as 0. So, due to this inverter, we get the final output as 0. So, there is a bubble over here. And uh, the last one, it is uh, the non-inverting uh, uh, 2 is to 1 multiplexer. That means, here only we are inverting the A and B inputs. Okay. So, look at the logic symbol. This logic symbol as well as this logic symbol are one and the same, but it includes uh, the more number of uh, transistors here. So, whatever the value we are giving here, suppose if you give S is equal to 0. Okay. So, if you give S is equal to 0, this is 1. So, here it will be a 1 and this will be 0 okay, and this will be 1 and this will be 0. So, this will be turned on whereas, this will be turned off that we know already. Now, if you give A is equal to 0, 
the output of the inverter will be 1 since this transmission gate is uh, turned on. So, it will act like a buffer. So, this is 1. So, the output of the transmission gate is also 1, but due to this inverter you get the output as 0. So, what is the initially we gave A as 0, what is initially we gave A as 0, but finally what is the output we are getting at Z that is also 0. That means we are simply adding 2 inverters. So, this is the non-inverting form of a 2 is to 1 a multiplexer. Okay. Now, we can also implement a 2 is to 1 multiplexer by using a compound gates that is uh, O A I uh, that is R and and invert logic or the uh, A O I 2 2 that is also we can uh, implement it. Okay. So, finally, the output will be in the uh, inverted form. Okay. So, this is uh, the circuit diagram of the OAI22, but whatever I have written in terms of transistor level it is this will be AOI22. Okay. So, the logical diagram I have written for OAI22 and the uh, the transistor version I have written for AY22. So, we can realize uh, the multiplexer function table uh, by using a AOI structure or a OAI uh, structure. Okay. So, we will see here uh, how it is going to uh, work here. Okay. So, there are uh, two inputs data inputs you can see here in the PMOS side. So, since it is AOI22 that is why here it is uh, the AND form. Okay, so, and for and plus it is uh, the in parallel and again when um, uh, A and B that is suppose if S bar and D naught are in series obviously the S bar and D naught will comes in parallel and S and D 1 is in series means in case of your PMOS transistor S and D 1 will become in parallel. So, both it will be in series. Okay. So, now let us take uh, the simple uh, example. So, now I will make S is equal to 0, I will make S is equal to 0, obviously S bar is equal to 1, right. So, wherever S is equal to 0, you substitute value S is equal to 0, S is equal to 0, S bar is equal to 1 and one more S bar, S bar is equal to 1, ok. Now, I will give the input, a data input. So, I will give here as a D naught is equal to 1 okay? and D 1 also I will give it as uh, say I will consider it as 0 only. We will see which output is going to appear across the Y output. Okay? So, now since S is equal to 0 this transistor is turned on okay? and what is the value of given for D 1 is also equal to 0 and D naught is equal to 1. right? D naught is equal to 1. So, since D 1 is 0, this is also turned on. Okay. Now, S bar is equal to 1. So, this is off, this transistor is off okay. and then D naught is equal to 1. So, this transistor is also off. Okay. So, now uh, D naught is equal to 1. So, this transistor is on, S bar is also 1. So, this transistor is on. Now, S is equal to 0, so this is off okay, and D 1 is equal to 0, so this is also off. Now, you can only uh, say that the output is pulled down to 0 or pulled up to the supply voltage. See, you can see the path now. So, you can see the path here. See, these two transistors are in series, these two also is in series. Now, this transistor is off that means the switch is open. So, your series path is not going to exist. Here also this side also the series path is not going to exist because both your S bar and D naught will be off. Whereas, in this case if you see this S and D 1 both are in the open uh, the switch is open whereas, this 
uh, S bar and D naught will be turned on. Anyway, these two transistors are in a parallel combination. S and D1 is in parallel with S bar and D naught. So, because since these two transistors are turned on, right, so the series path exists. So, output Y is pulled down to 0. So, which value it has uh, given a uh, reference? Now, you have changed the, you have given a D naught as 1 here. So, output you are getting here as a 0. It is not given any importance to your D1 value. You can see here, it is not given any importance to your D1 value. It has given an importance to D naught. Since your D naught value is 1, so that is why the output y is 0. So, you can see the logical symbol here. Your output will be in the inverted mode. You won't get the true output. You want to get the true output? Put on inverter. You will get the true output. Okay. So, when your d naught is equal to 1, so the output y is equal to 0. Okay. So, how the d naught will be selected? Because when you give s is equal to 0, very simple. When you give s is equal to 0, the d naught will be selected. When you give s is equal to 1, when you give s is equal to 1, when you give s is equal to 1, okay, d 1 input will be selected, okay. So, we will see that case also. Now, we will give s is equal to 1 okay, and we will give d 1 is also 1. So, s wherever s is there you give 1 and wherever d 1 is there you give 1 okay. and then s bar is a complement of s is a complement of s bar. So, this will be a 0 and you can give d naught as 0 or 1 it does not make any difference. So, I will give d naught also as 1. Okay. So, I will give d naught also as 1. Okay. So, now you can see here. So, since S is 1, this transistor is off. Okay. This is also off. Okay. Since your S bar is 0. Okay. So, this is on and this is also off. Okay. So, here the S bar is 0. So, it is off and D naught uh, is on and here S is equal to 1. So, since S is equal to 1, this is on, D 1 is also 1, this is also on. Okay. So, now you can see here uh, there is no series path exist because the switches are off, there is no series path exist. So, your output Y is not uh, uh, pulled up to the supply voltage. Again, this transistor is off and this is on. So, the switch is open over here, series path is not going to exist. Whereas, here the series path exists, both the transistors are uh, turned on here. Okay. So, S is equal to 1 and D1 is equal to 1. So, your output is pulled down to uh, 0. But what is the input we have given here as? D1 as 1. So, your output is 0. Why? Because inverted version because in the logic symbol itself it shows that inverted output we are getting here. Okay. Suppose if I make the d 1 as 0 here, if I make d 1 as 0, what happens here? If I make a d 1 as 0, So, if I make a d 1 as 0 now, if I make d 1 as 0, okay, so d naught as 1, okay. so here s is 1, so it is off and s bar is 0, okay, this is on okay, 
and d1 as d1 as 0 so this is on so if your d0 is 1 or 0 okay this can be 1 means it is on this can be a 0 means it is off so it is on or off it doesn't make any difference because already the series path is already is exist so this can be d0 can be 1 or d0 can be 0 so i will consider it as d0 as 0 so i will keep this as off state only okay so here also your d0 will be 0 so i will be doing i mean this transistor you assume it as off only since your d1 is also a 0 so this is also off now look at this scenario here so for a n channel transistor so the three transistor will be in the off state so here since this transistor is on but the series path is not going to exist because this particular transistor is off okay whereas in this case if you see whereas in this case if you see we made d1 is equal to 0 so this transistor and this transistor so there is a series path exist so your output is pull up to the supply voltage so you get the output y as 1 you get the output y as 1 you get the output y as you get the output y as 1 ok what is the input we have given 0 we have given a d1 as 0 we get the output y as 1 ok so inverted version of output we are getting here so this is how we can realize uh, 2 is to 1 multiplexer using the uh, uh, AOI or OAI logic. Yeah, so we can also implement a multiplexer using a tri state inverter logic. Okay, so you can uh, see here how we can implement uh, the multiplexer using. 2 is to 1 multiplexer using tri state inverter logic. So, there are 2 data inputs, ok. So, 2 inverters are required. Suppose you want to realize uh, 4 is to 1 multiplexer, then 4 tri state inverters are required, ok. So, D0 and D1 because 4 data inputs are coming into the picture, so 4 tri state inverters are required. So, these 2 are the, uh, the control lines that is the uh, select inputs, ok. So, and then this is a logic symbol you can see here also we get the output as in the inverted version only ok. So, when you see the previous uh, diagram it consumes how many transistors? It consumes how many transistors? We require 4 PMOS and 4 NMOS. So, total we require 8 transistors ok. So, here also we require a 4 PMOS and 4 NMOS here also we require 8 transistors only ok. So, now we will take up the case as S is equal to 0. When you give S is equal to 0 and S bar is equal to 1, so what happens here? This transistor is turned on, this is also turned on. So, whatever the value it is there on the D, D naught that is passing on to the output with a inverted version because it will act like a ordinary inverter. Now, if you give d is equal to 0, the ordinary inverter means the output will be 1 here. So, that 1 is going to appear over here. Whereas, in case of this here, when s is equal to 0, so this will be off, this is also off. So, both the switches are open, ok. So, it is not whatever the value it is there on the d1, it is not giving at the output y because there is no path exists, both the switches are open mode, ok. So, we get the output as d0 is equal to 0 and y is equal to 1. Now, if you give d1, d0 as 1, your output y will be 0, ok. So, now if you take s is equal to 1. If you take S is equal to 1,
if you take s is equal to 1 now, s is 1, so s bar will be 0, so both the transistors will be off here and here since s, s is equal to 1, so this transistor will be on, this transistor is also on, okay. So now these two transistor are off, so the switch is open, okay. So whatever the value if you give across your D naught, that is not appear at the output side, uh, that is in the inverted form, it is not going to appear at the output side, okay. But since the both the switches are closed over here, so now it will consider only the D1 input, if your D1 is 0, output will be 1, if your D1 is 1, the output will be 0, because once the switch, these two switches are closed, it will work like a ordinary inverter. So when your D1 is 0, this transistor is on and this transistor is off, since both the transistors are on, it is constructed in series, so your output Y is pulled up to the supply voltage, that is why you get 1 over here. Okay. So, this is the logic symbol of the uh, 2 is to 1 multiplexer using tri-state inverter. <coughs> Next, we will discuss about the concept of a CMOS latch. Okay. So, latch and a flip-flop, it is going to store the values uh, that is 0 or 1 that means it will be in set condition or it will be in the uh, reset condition, okay. So if you consider a flip-flop either the positive wedge triggered or the negative wedge triggered flip-flop we are considering it. So only during the rising edge of the clock whatever the value it is there on the uh, input side it is passing on to the output side. If you consider a D latch uh, whatever the value it is there on the D it is passing on to the output side if you consider a D flip-flop. If you consider a D latch, okay, so whenever the clock is transparent, that means whenever the clock is transparent, if you keep on changing your D value, you are keep on changing your D value, your output also changes, your output also changes. So the condition is that the clock should be transparent. And if the clock goes to in the off state, okay, even if you change your D value, okay, your output is not going to change, it is going to hold the previous state itself, it is going to hold the previous state itself, okay. So whereas in case of your the edge trigger devices, okay, so it is the output value is going to change, it is follow the input only during the a rising edge of the clock or only during the falling edge of the clock, okay. So whereas in case of a latch, it is not like that, it will just see the clock, see here also one, here also one, here also one, here also one, whenever your clock is transparent, if you keep on changing the D value, your output is also changing here, okay. So we will see. Okay. So now this is the construction of a CMOS a D latch using transmission gates. Okay. So you can see here uh, there is one transmission gate here, there is one transmission gate okay. and uh, there are uh, three inverters are there, there are three inverters are there. So what may be the function table here, so if you are simple function table, this is I will call it as a clock D and output Q. If your clock is 0, okay, whatever the value if you give, it is holding the a previous state only. So the previous state it can be 1 or it can be a 0, it is holding the previous state. I will just uh, write it as hold. H I will write hold, 
okay. If your clock is 1, if your D is 0, your output will be 0. If your D is 1, your output is 1. This is a simplified uh, function table of your uh, D latch. Okay. So, we will see now. So, now we will assume uh, the uh, clock is 1 only. Okay. So, clock is 1, I am giving here as clock is 1. If I give clock is 1, the output of this inverter, there is an inverter here. So, clock n will become 0 and clock p will become 1. You can see here the clock n will become 0 and clock p will be 1. So, initially I am giving clock as 1. So, clock n where is the, where it is connected in the circuit diagram here. That means this will be 0, clock p this will be 1. So, now here it is p MOS transistor, here it is n MOS transistor. So, this transmission gate is turned on. So, this transmission gate is turned on. So, that is why I put a tick mark here. Now, this transmission gate is turned on. What is here clock n? This is 0, this is 1. So, this transmission gate is turned off. Okay. Now, now if I apply d is equal to 0. Now, if I apply d is equal to 0. So, since this transmission gate is turned on, right? So, due to the presence of this inverter, I get 1 here. So, a transmission gate job is it just passing the value. Okay. So, here it is 1 and then I get the output as 0. So, what is the input I have applied? D as 0. What is the output I am getting here as? Q as 0. So, this condition is satisfied now. I have done a clock is equal to 1. I have applied D input as 0 and I am getting the Q output as 0. Okay. So, now this Q output is serving as an input to this inverter. That means, what is the inverter output? Here it is 1. But since this transmission gate is off, so it is not passing the value over here. So it will be, this one will be, it is waiting here because this transmission gate is off. It is not passing the value at this particular point. Got it? Next. We will take up the, uh, the next case. Okay. So if you consider a next case, so that is what it is written in a diagrammatic way. So, since the switch is uh, uh, closed here, because since if you give CK is equal to 1, the switch is closed. So, whatever the value you give here as D is equal to 0, that will appear as due to this inverter, it will appear as 1. So, here it will be 1 because switch is closed, it is just passing the value over here. So, you are due to this presence of this inverter, the output will be 0. So, that is why you are getting the Q output as a 0 okay? and this Q output is serving as a input here. The output of this inverter is 1, but this switch is open. So, it is not passing the value over here. Why? Because this switch is open here. Okay? So, next we will take up the next case as clock is equal to 0 now. Okay, clock is equal to 0, this condition I will tell. So, if clock is equal to 0, so I will just use the eraser. Okay. So, when I apply the clock is equal to 0, if I apply clock is equal to 0, so CLK n will be 1 and CLK p will be 0. Okay. So, my D value previously it can be anything D can be 1 or 0. So, now CLK 1 is equal to CLK n is equal to 1. So, this will be 1 okay, and this will be 0. So, this transmission gate is off. So, previously uh, what is the value we have taken? Q is equal to 0. D is 0 we have taken right. Now, CLK n is equal to 1. CLK
So, C L K one minute yeah now C L K C L K n is equal to 1 and this will be 0 that means this transmission gate is turned on now ok. So, that means this transmission gate is open. So, it is not going to pass any new value. So, now Q is 0 and this Q is serving as an input over here. So, due to the presence of this inverter we get the value here as 1 ok. Since this transmission gate switch is closed, so this 1 it is going to appear over here and then the output of the inverter will be 0 that means that the whole of this part will be in loop 0, 1 and then 1, 0. So, this will be in loop that means that it is going to hold the previous state itself, it is going to hold the previous state itself ok. So, that is what the diagram uh, it is written over here. So, whenever this switch is open it is not going to take any new value ok. So, previous value will be q is equal to 0. So, that is uh, going over here you get 1. So, switch is closed this one comes here and you get the output as 0. So, this will be in loop. So, the uh, new value is not updated at the output side, the new value is not updated at the output side, it is going to hold the previous value itself ok. So, this is how the CMOS latch is constructed by using uh, transmission gates ok. So, uh, the uh, thank you next class we will going to uh, uh, detailed explanation uh, uh, with the master slave flip flop uh, using the construction of uh, the uh, 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 using the construction by transmission gates itself. So, we will see in the next class as uh, master slave uh, negative edge triggered uh, uh, D flip flop thank you.